Welcome to the Golden Ratio Podcast. I am Jen, Jared Mom, joined as always by Jared Dad. Hi. How's it going, Jared Dad? Uh, it's okay. <sighs> Things have not improved since last week. They have changed, but they're not really better. Not all change is good. The cocktail of the week is the pineapple train wreck, again, like my life. <laughs> <laughs> Dark rum, overproof rum, a little bit of Angostura and Peugeot's bitters, pineapple juice, ginger syrup, and uh, yeah. Train wreck. Yeah. I think that's from Pineapple Express. I think they took it several steps further. But anyway, I'm going to leave that out there. All right. Here's the dog updates. Uh, Hops is the current, like, immediate dog with problems. Her arm is still really sore. We're still waiting to hear back from the orthopedic clinic in Maryland. (sighs) We started her on a whole bunch of medicines additional medicine so she got some cold laser on friday we started her on adequine injections on friday but they're still not really doing anything for the hygroma but it's not getting better so she's limping still yeah <laughs> still uh did you get angle your mic up towards your face a little bit more yeah well interesting like this that's better i guess hey hey so hey. Uh, but Hops went swimming today, and she... All right, so, no. That's what we did Friday. When did we take her back in on emergency? Was that yesterday? Yeah, There's I think so, yeah. so much. Tuesday... Uh, yeah, yesterday was Hops. Tuesday, we kind of brought her in urgently to the vet because she was, like, all hunched over, and her tum was kind of Yeah, tight. like she was doing a crunch, like doing a sit-up the whole time, I felt like. yeah. So it seems like she's got a problem with her neck, which the vet thinks is because she's been limping and kind of hauling herself around that she probably pulled something in her neck. So we got some extra medicine to hopefully help with that, though she's kind of on all the medicine she can be on at this point. And then tonight I was in the water with hops and everybody with everybody. Yeah, Uh, because she can walk around in the water fine, right? It takes pressure off that joint. And so I would throw the ball and Guac and I race for the ball and Hop swims out and she clearly overdid it and probably swallowed some water. So now every time she breathes, she goes, oh, oh. <laughs> That's very accurate, oh. actually. <laughs> yeah. Disturbingly so. Yeah. That's what she sounds like now. I'm guessing she's sore because she overdid it. And also she probably swallowed a bunch of seawater. Her belly feels a little puffy. She's not bloating like the medical condition because she drank some water and they, they can't drink when they're bloating. So we're going to kind of do this podcast quickly so I can hang out outside with Hops unless she stops making the sound. She has not stopped making the sound. She just made it. Um, And hopefully she can expel that seawater in whatever way she finds appropriate and we'll feel better. Yeah. All right. Remy would have low, low blood sugar. Low, low blood sugar. We, like it was 30... I was flying home from California last week, and Jared had like, it's just low. Like, it's so low, it's not registering on the blood glucose meter, which is like, potentially you have to take him to the hospital kind of thing. So we have been working with the vet. We now cut his insulin in half from what it was, which probably is not quite enough, but it's close. He's actually pretty close. Uh, so we it was like Friday morning. We gave him half the insulin because we were really worried about how low his blood sugar had gotten. And I was waiting to hear from the vet if she wanted to keep doing it at half level. Like she's like, give him half a dose this morning, see what happens because we don't want his blood sugar dropping like it's been doing every day. And then let me know. And so at like 530, she texted me and she's like, you know, sorry, I didn't get back to you when I was in the office. Uh, How's his blood sugar? And I was like, well, He's learned to counter surf since this morning, and he just ate 10 oatmeal cookies <laughs> off the counter. I forgot about that. That were cooling there. He did. He just snarfed them all. Jared had caught him with his paws on the counter. Oh. Uh, he's a diabetic, and he ate 10 oatmeal cookies. So we gave him some hydrogen peroxides. He puked back most of those oatmeal cookies, but I was like, so this is complicated, his blood sugar levels. So it's probably good you gave him insulin in the morning. <laughs> <sighs> so we're still working on him. He's swimming a lot. He does like to swim. Yeah. He's fearless because if I were blind, I sure wouldn't be swimming in the ocean. Yeah. It would scare the everything out of me. Vood went to the neurologist today. He has not had any seizures since the bad seizures. 
Uh, we cut back his phenobarbital a little because he can't walk on the heavy dose that we had him on. He just falls over. Uh, so GR dad drove him up to Miami today. They're still doing COVID protocols. So they come out to the car and get him. And so they took him in and then they had my number. So they called me. I conferenced and Jared dad. We're talking with the neurologist and she's like, he's a really nice boy. And we're both like, mm hmm. <laughs> she's like, he's really stubborn and does what he wants to do. And we're like, yep. She's like, we did the exam in the hallway because that's where he laid down and decided he was going to stay. <laughs> They're trying to get him into a room and Fuz is just like, yeah. I was just thinking about that. I was like, yeah. Should I tell the tech <laughs> when they picked her up, picked him up from the car? I was like, should I tell the tech that it takes treats sometimes to get him to do anything? Because I had to like, he I, I carried him, I lifted him up, put him, took him out of the car, and he immediately laid down next to the car. That's what he does. Yeah. And then I was like, I kind of like boosted up his behind so he so he would wheelbarrow forward, and that was enough to get him going with the tech. But I was like. I'll let them figure it out. <laughs> they'll, they'll figure it out. They're experts at dealing with animals. Yeah. He laid down in the hall and they're just like, fine, we'll examine him here. Uh, he was probably like, that's fine with me. So his brain works fine. Uh, I mean, the whole we weren't expecting anything dramatic from this. I, the neurologist was wonderful and she talked to us for a long time. But basically, we're, we're not really even adjusting any medicine at this point, yeah, like but she, we she j- what we were hoping is she would m- make sure that all the four or five different anti-epilepsy medicines he's on inter- are interacting correctly and are dosed correctly because that's yeah. a weird, I mean, that's a, you know, uh, an algorithm. Yeah, so it looks like we're pretty much okay. We may tweak some things, you know, one, going forward once he's stable, but we'll see. Uh, she did give us a bunch of emergency medication to have which is quite a relief. We had one dose of that. I think we said before, we had had one dose that we used um, whatever, a week and a half ago, and he had the cluster seizure. And they did give us one more from our vet. But I, when I wrote up everything I wanted from this vet, I'm like, we need stuff if he has this in the middle of the night because we're three hours from an emergency vet. So they gave us three doses plus a oral medication. So that's good. But, yeah. they, all right. They didn't have anything for stubborn. No, they don't treat that. Uh, So Saturday, I don't know what we had done. We maybe had just like gone in to get tacos for Guago Man or something. But we had Guac and Vood in the car and we got home and then we're like, okay, let's go upstairs, Guac and Vood. And we put them in the elevator and we started going up. We got halfway up and the elevator stopped. And we're stuck in there with the two dogs looking at us going, what? It's not, it's not quite as dramatic as Dear Dad makes it out to be because it still would go down. It had power. It just doesn't go up. It was a surprise. Anymore. It was a surprise, but we were not actually stuck in I the elevator. I was disappointed more than surprised. So uh, we called. It's Saturday, right? Nobody's going to come fix our elevator. So we called a place here in the Keys that said they do emergency repair. And I talked to a lady <laughs> and she's like, so you want someone to sit batch for emergency repair? And I was like, yeah. Uh, when are they coming? She's like, do you want us to have them call you when they're on the way? And I was like, yeah, we have yet to hear from them on Wednesday. Wednesday, Saturday. Our regular elevator place opened on Monday and we called them. They did send a guy out today. He came and uh, he tried to replace the fuse. The fuse immediately blew up again. So there's another part that has a short in it. And unfortunately, he didn't have it. They've been back ordered on it. So we have to wait for the part to come in. He almost didn't come because it was raining. (laughs) So GR Dad has been carrying Voods, all 93 pounds of Voods, up and down the stairs every time he needs to go out yep. since Saturday. I mean, I do like carrying things. Thank God People, you're strong enough to do that. things, animals, I like carrying all things that are heavy, so it's it's actually fine. And Voods is quite pleased he with the loves, process. He, he loves he it. He is now at the point, because we've caught him doing it, he could walk down the stairs by himself. But he'll stop at the top and go, hmm, huh, huh, huh. <laughs> I mean, I had to take him out once when you weren't here, and we did fine. I can kind of carry his back end up the stairs. Yeah, you wheelbarrowed him up. It's fine, but he much prefers to be carried, carried. Yes, he's, yeah. he's not only does he tolerate it, he likes it. Yeah. Uh, and, and hops, too, now with, uh, with the bum leg. I yeah. can carry her down, too. I can sort of carry her. But she also can do it by herself. She yeah. just uses the good leg. Um. Yeah, I'm rushing through the podcast here, Dad, because I, I want to go tend to hops. Got it. So uh, we, di- we are introducing a new segment this week. 
could be short term, could be long term. Neglected dog of the week. Yeah, we're going to have dog of the week, and then it's either the one unsung hero of the week, neglected dog of the week, or maybe we'll have sickest dog of the week. We don't need sickest dog of the week. That would be dog of the week. Neglected dog of the week, which is dog who's just not causing any trouble and thus is not getting the attention they need. Yeah. Uh, It's CBGB this week. It's CB, even though he's still kind of whiny sometimes and gets attention that way, but but much less than the other dogs. He hasn't developed any weird, weird symptoms for anything. So. If, we, if we had to hire someone in to just, like, love on a dog... It would, this week it would have been CBGB. CB needed Because Vink, for some reason, we've been giving a lot of attention to. Yeah. More than... Good job, Vink. Sometimes. Sometimes it's Vink. Okay. Uh, you want to do German Word of the Week? Sure. Do it. I, yeah, we had all these. Cl- and go, do it. Rabauke. There you go. It's always good when it's German, huh? Yeah, yeah. It means like a rowdy person. Rabauke. Rabauke. It might be old fashioned. It's a weird accent. Rabauke? Yeah, like Rabauke would be more how a German word's normally pronounced. Maybe. Maybe it's from French. No, you do have a bunch of those. It's not obvious to me that it's from a, French. Like a though. troublemaker. Spell it. R A B A U K E. Rabauka. Rabauka. It's probably medieval German. That is a weird it word. It sounds very medieval to me. Rabauka. Rabauka. Like a miscreant. Yeah, someone who gets thrown out of a bar. <laughs> a Rabauka. rebel rouser. A rebel rouser is good, yeah. Yeah, it sounds very medieval, Chaucer esque or something. Yeah. Rabauka. I like it. It's a good yeah. one. Yeah. That's guac having a nightmare. No, it's Vodes. Oh. He's barking in his sleep. Voodles. You yeah. had a big day in Miami. You sure did. He saw a lot of things out that window. <laughs> so, Taste of the Keys this week. Uh, oh, so, apologies that we have not yet revived Murders in Paradise. I got a list. It's just everything's been really overwhelming. We're we're close to ready to go, and we just need to be able to sit down. Just let, let a dog not have to go to the doctor that day. Yeah. One day. Also, it sucks for me to sit because someday my butt won't hurt, but today is not that day, which I honestly I think has been a thing that has kept me from going like, let's sit down and record a podcast for an hour because it, it pains me to sit after about 15 minutes. You are handling it amazingly well Thank still. You. you cannot even complain enough about it if you wanted to to catch up with all the like non-complaining you've been doing for the last six months on that thank you unbelievable i am still in awe when i think about it i would have cut my own butt off if <laughs> something drastic and stupid <laughs> is what i would have done so i i mentioned murders in paradise because we will make this key, this uh, taste of the keys will eventually become a murders in paradise episode which this is from today's conch life arrest made in 2017 key largo murder this is good stuff. Yeah. A 54-year-old man has been arrested in the October 21st, 2017 murder of Mary Bonneville. Forensics, baby. So basically, there was a fire at her house in Key Largo. Police and firefighters responded. They found her dead in the house. She had been stabbed in the throat. This guy tried to decapitate her. Oof. Uh, Oof. I know. Oof. And... Uh, they just identified him with DNA that was on objects in the house. Nice yeah. work, uh, Monroe County or, or whoever did it. Nice work. Yeah, it was Monroe County. Um, yeah, so we'll do all the details of that in our, probably we can do that in our kickoff episode of Murders in Paradise, and I'll, I'll pull up all the like original yeah. news stories and everything and do the full thing, but that's pretty interesting, pretty TV CSI, like they found his... DNA like on a beer can and a towel in her house and they it was, and it was how four many years? years four years, four years ago, ago. Yeah. nice they you thought he was gone. safe mm-hmm. probably yeah you're never safe from the Monroe County <laughs> Sheriff's Department <laughs> uh, the, the hard thing about murders in paradise is that there's like one murder a year <laughs> in the Keys there's just not that many uh, yeah. which is why we cover a lot of other things ghosts hurricanes weird dudes in the 30s count Gross man. Von Castle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> weird gross. stalker, gross. necrophiliac. <laughs> uh, so yeah, there's a lot of non. There's more non-murder than murder. This this season, 
of Murders in Paradise. We will do some murders. We're also going to do the Mariel Boat Lift, which we talked about on this podcast yes. a little bit. We're going to do the 1935 Labor Day Hurricane. Yep. Um, we're going to do the Lincoln assassination. That's to your dad's assignment. Yes, there's a connection to here. There is a connection here. Um, yeah. I got a couple other ones. Yeah, you got other ones. Lined we up, we like have missing we have persons. All and... the material ready. Yeah, a couple missing persons, a couple old murders. So all the stuff is ready. We just need to sit down and do it. So, it or stand up and do it in your case, because sitting hurts your butt. Someday my not butt not won't hurt, that, but today is not that not day. Not that day. <laughs> I, maybe I just need to work on building a setup where we can podcast, where I can be like lounged back in a comfy chair instead of sitting at the dining room table. And all the dogs would be locked up somewhere else. Man, I mean, that was the problem with the couch cast. A lot There's of dogs. Too much up access the by, by dogs. When, yeah. when I lie on the floor, or you lie on the floor, all the dogs think it's, think it's a total invitation or a man, mandate to come just like collapse on you. Yeah. My favorite murder, like they record in one of their houses. They, they have recorded many episodes in one or another person's house, and they're doing it now. And they have, like, a coffee table. They, were, they, are, they do record on couches, and they have a coffee table that the mics are tied to. So I think they have longer mic arms than we do. Maybe. But then they just kind of lounge back. They don't have six dogs. Down. Actually, Karen has two dogs, and they have been in the room when they've been podcasting for the last few episodes. It's so nice. That must be so nice. <laughs> What's that like? <laughs> She has little ones, though, little or no, than we. No, no. No, really? Yeah, her dog George is, is like a lab mix. Big dog. <sighs> now I have even more envy of those two. <laughs> obviously, they're excellent Also, at what they're they making do. way more money on their podcast. Uh, obviously, they're, they're excellent in what they oh, do. Oh, hey, speaking of which, I was making money on our podcast. I always forget. Like, we have sponsors, and I always forget. Oh, yeah. So, all right. So, BarkBox is still our sponsor. Awesome. <laughs> they're giving away all kinds of weird stuff. Uh, which we tweet about. But we got a new sponsor this week. Jared, I haven't even told you no, about our nobody new... nobody tells me anything. I'm new sponsor this week. So um, this sponsor actually reached out to us and was like, would you like to partner with us for this? So it's Vetster. And Vetster is basically the app that we recommended before that we used. Tele vet. Tele 24-hour Televet. So nice. you go in, it's like 30 bucks. And they right away connect you to a vet um, for like emergency consultation. So they'll tell you like, do you need to take your dog into the emergency vet where do, you're going to pay? Do you need to in- introduce what is it stuff that makes them puke? Hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide. Yeah. So my that's right. My dog just ate a pound and a half of chocolate covered espresso beans, which is the thing that happened to us. Do I need to bring this dog into the emergency vet? You can pay 30 bucks instead of paying 150 bucks for the emergency fee. Talk to a vet and they'll be like, if you have this medicine, right. like if you're like, oh, my dog just has like diarrhea, which this happened with Hops when she was a puppy, every five minutes in the house, like what can we do? And they'll be like, you can give your dog a modium and it's fine. Stop giving him... Um, they won't do that. Rawhide. So, so yeah, uh, we have used this service before when hops had her arm sore it was great they're like i was like we have a ton of medicine and they're like do you have this medicine and i was like we sure do and they're like here's how much you would give her of it um and certainly we will end up using this again since we don't have an emergency vet here um to just you know if we have questions on stuff like is this a thing we need to worry about should we drive three hours or is it okay to wait um it was really great and so they just this week I think found us in in one of the places and uh now we have a partnership with them so if you need you don't have to do anything until like you feel like you need to have a emergency vet <laughs> visit basically so there's someone to talk to yeah it's, <laughs> it's not like it's not like oh you sign up with a scrip- subscription or something like it's just oh, that's good when you yeah. need to use them um so in our bio links and all of our socials like it goes to our link tree and vetster is the name and it's in there so um, when people ask me, like yesterday, someone's like, what's the name of that app? Because I need to check with my dog. So I'll, I'll give you the link if you ask. But if it's like three in the morning, East time, and I'm asleep, maybe. <laughs> it's not always the case these days. Uh, but if I'm not, if I'm not on the socials, um, just go into our bio links and you'll see Vetster in there. It's the second link. And uh, it just takes you there and you pay nice. their feeds. And it's like... I mean, it's amazing, right? It's 30 bucks and you get like an actual vet. You know, it's vets that are kind of like at emergency clinics anyway. And they're just, 
you know, they'll also do cases like this. It's for 30 bucks. It's Man, crazy. Vets are nice people. <laughs> it's a, vets, vets are nice people. It's a great thing. So. They are. Okay, so that's it for this week. Uh, rushing through. So, let's see. Is Hops making the sound still? Right, hang, hang on. Dear Dad, say something funny to make. Tell him a dad joke while I check on Hops. <laughs> uh, I can't do it. I'm on command. Did you, did you hear that Venkman was fired from her, her job at the M&M factory that she just started a week before? It's because she was throwing away all the W's. She thought she was being very helpful. <laughs> You can't criticize. That's I, a stupid joke. I did. Well, of course, it's a dad joke. Thank you for telling the joke. <laughs> of course, it's a stupid joke. Hops is making slightly less sound than when we started the podcast. I mean, so that's positive. Maybe if we went longer, she'd be quieter. She's also facing a different direction. Oh, maybe. So maybe this is helping. Oh, poor Hops. I know. Anyway, um, thanks everybody for listening. Please continue sending healing vibes in the direction <laughs> of the squad. Maybe try a little harder because the ones you have been sending <laughs> aren't working. I know the ones that went to your butt didn't do anything. Jeez. I mean, think how bad the butt would be if the, they were not the healing vibes. Oh, yeah. It. Thank goodness. It's only just annoying all the time. <sighs> anyway, uh, times are still a little tough in the household. Dude, the world. They're going to, yeah. Dude, the world and also in the household. It's going to get better. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, until next week. Get your vaccine if you haven't. Keep wearing your masks. And don't bite. It's just, I mean, come on. You have better things to do than bite each other. Unless they ask you to. (laughs) Unless you ask you to, and that's a whole different thing. Bye. Bye.